For those of you who don't know me, my name is Carmen James and I'm president of the Board of Trustees for the Cumberland County Historical Society. Uh, thanks, Jim. <laughs> I, uh, I know that a lot of you may not know me and I try to uh, sort of work the crowd uh, as everyone arrives. So I want to welcome everybody. Uh, it's a, it's we we're expecting 120 people, and I don't think we have that many seats that aren't filled. Uh, we have a good program today. We have the normal um, annual meeting items on the agenda, and we have a wonderful speaker. We also have awards um, to the people that we feel have done this outstanding 2022 um, jobs. So again, I want to thank everyone. Um, Sean, I'm going to introduce Sean Gladden next. Uh, I hope everyone's had an opportunity to meet him, but if you haven't, today is the day that, that, that you'll get an opportunity to see Sean and, and ask him all the questions you want. So uh, further ado, I will present Sean Gladden. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, we do appreciate you being here today. This is a slightly different format that I think many of you have, um, uh, have grown accustomed to. Um, we wanted to do this this way, to um, open up the society and invite more of our members to be a part of what we do, and I, I really thank all of you for coming today. Thank you very much. I was asked to give, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I was asked to give a talk on the state of, this, of CCHS. Um, I've been here seven months now, so I guess this is the state of CCHS so far. <laughs> <laughs> Members, board of trustees, and staff of the Cumberland County Historical Society, I thank you all for giving me the opportunity to lead what is truly an amazing organization. I am truly blessed to have this dedicated and professional staff, an active and engaging board that cares about the society and the community that we serve. And of course, this beautiful campus that features a top-notch museum, library, and gift shop. I've been with the organization for almost eight months and have overseen some great movement forward as we have transitioned out of the post-pandemic environment and into some regularity. This year, we expanded museum and shop hours with great success. Visitation and gift shop sales have seen nice increases. We have had a very active program schedule, which not only features our mission-related history programming and tours, but also active in our outreach in the form of tabling events, fundraisers, mixers, and other events. We do have a few coming up in November and December, which I'd like to plug here and now if I can. Um, in November, we have a night with the babe which will be uh, the Babe Ruth Museum from Baltimore is coming up here as kind of the final event to coincide with our sports exhibit. Um, Babe Ruth Museum will be coming up with artifacts from their collection and we will have a talk on 19th century baseball. We'll be serving hachi dogs, cracker jacks, and beer because it's a baseball event. <laughs> That's kind of how it works. All right. That's on November the 3rd, right here, and there is a discount for members uh, for that evening. We also are doing a historically inappropriate comedy benefit with our friends at the West Shore Historical Society, Don Paul Shearer, president of Don Paul. We are very happy to partner with West Shore Historical Society on what we think will be a great event. Um, all proceeds from that event will go both to the, the Cumberland County Historical Society and the West Shore Historical Society. And that is on Veterans Day, November the 11th, at the newly renovated West Shore Theater in New Cumberland. As an added little note, all of the comedians are United States veterans. So we're tying that into to the veteran theme. And then finally, our holiday gala on Saturday, December the 10th. Uh, there are flyers for that um, out of the hall. We decided to move our gala from September to December. Uh, gives us a little bit more time to plan and get it right. There will be uh, live jazz music um, and uh, opportunity to dance and drink and eat and all those lovely things that you like to do around the holidays. Um, that will be on, once again, on December the, the 10th. 
All of this activity has created a buzz around the society that we've been capitalizing on. We've picked up close to 100 new members so far this year through reaching out to the community, sharing what we do, and creating new experiences for audience that, audiences that we previously may not have connected with. In my career, I have found that historical societies, museums, and historical repositories thrive when they are inclusive, community-driven, and most importantly, those who create value for their most important stakeholders, the members. Together, we are working to provide more benefits to you, the members of the Cumberland County Historical Society. You are a vital part of what we do here, and a big part of our success. In the future, we will be providing more programming, mission and non-mission related, more free events for members, exclusive shopping opportunities for those who enjoy our history on High Shop, and looking at some of the bags in the room. I see that was already, already done. Thank you very much. We're also rental opportunities at our historic Two Mile House or here at the Society and much, much more. My philosophy is simple. Historic, historical societies today need to be vibrant and community driven as well as being stewards of the community's history. We have all the pieces to make CCHS a nationally known, premier historical organization. I'll say that again, a nationally renowned historical organization, which is what we should be. Our collection is one of the finest that I've had the pleasure of working with. The staff is dedicated to what they do, and they do it with a professionalism that is refreshing while also keeping things light. If I can get a round of applause for my awesome staff who are standing in the back. They are truly a great crew and I am very fortunate. One of our greatest strengths is also one of our greatest areas of opportunity, our facilities. I will say that one of the major challenges before us is the care and maintenance of our historic buildings. The Pitt Street Building, which houses the museum and Hamilton Library. The High Street Building, which is home to History on High. And the Two Mile House, our off-site historic home, all require significant upkeep and maintenance. They are significant expenditures on the society's bottom line. But it is within our mission to care for these buildings like they were part of our collection. Whereas these buildings are certainly challenges, they are also great opportunities. We are making investments back into our buildings and putting a renewed focus in caring for them and taking care of the problems before they happen rather than being reactionary. As many of you may have noticed, the process has already begun. <laughs> Thanks to support from our Vice President, Pat Ferris, we are addressing some facade and entranceway problems by replacing the concrete walkway and regrading for safer accessibility into the building. We are waiting to hear back from the county regarding a large recovery grant that we applied for. If we get that grant, then our next order of business is to repair identified structural issues within this building. We do have a lot of work to do. But our future is very bright, and I have full faith that we are heading in the right direction. Um, actually, something is not in my notes that I, I think I should mention. Um, next year's exhibit we are very excited about. Um, we are going to be uh, doing next year's exhibit, which will be replacing the sports exhibit, will be on railroads and railroading. Um, kind of part of my philosophy and the way that we are curating this exhibit, it is, is going to be a community collaboration. We're working with many historians and, and um, community leaders from other historical organizations to put together a county-wide focus on the history and impact of railroads here. It'll be, it'll be, um, it'll span uh, five galleries. So we'll have an exhibit in this space, in the first floor gallery space, the second floor gallery space, the um, hall outside of the photo archives, and across the street in our GB Stewart space. So it will be an all-encompassing exhibit. We're very excited um, to open that in April of next year. Pay attention to your program calendars and, and all the, the correspondence you get from us. We'll be updating the membership as we get closer to open. Now back to my what I actually wrote. <laughs> Speaking of the future, we have also begun a long-range planning process with a professional consultant. Thanks once again to the generosity of our Vice President, Pat Ferris. 
We will be working closely with Helix Solutions to develop a five-year plan. This five-year plan will serve as my marching orders and a clear strategic vision for the organization. This process involves all stakeholders in the organization, which includes all of you. As a follow-up to today's annual meeting, you will be receiving an email survey from Helix Solutions in the next few days. It is an anonymous three-minute survey asking you about your membership and how long you've been involved with CCHS. This data will be very important for our planning process. Please take the time to give us your feedback. Together we are all on a journey to make this organization the best that it can be for all of us. Whether you are a researcher, historian, or a teacher who uses the library and our impressively vast photo collection, or if you attend one of our engaging lectures, or if you just like to party with us, which I understand a few of you like to do. <laughs> I've heard about the McLean Festival. <laughs> there are many reasons to join and support the Cumberland County Historical Society. When I was interviewed for this position as a 20-year museum professional, it's easy for me to see the amazing potential, and coming to Carlisle was a no-brainer. In conclusion, members, <coughs> board of trustees, Madam President, the state of the society is good, and I'm honored to lead it forward. Thank you very much. for the Historical Society. Since 2001, Alvin has served as the gift planning officer for the Masonic Charities with the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania, where he is responsible for the oversight of the gift planning office with a focus on complex charitable planning. Prior to working for Masonic Charities, Alvin was in the private practice where he concentrated in estate and trust law. Attorney Blitz holds a Bachelor's of Science degree from the University of Scranton, a Master's of Arts degree from Fairleigh Dickinson University, and a Juris Doctorate from the Dickinson School of Law. He is a member of the PA Bar. He's also a member of the Carlisle Lodge number 260. He lives in Carlisle with his wife, Diane. He also has a son, Thomas, living in Arvada, Colorado, and another son, Paul, living in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Could you stand up, please, Mr. Blitz? Thank you, Todd. At this particular point in time, I'd like to 
to make a motion to accept Mr. Outwitz to the Board of Trustees for the Cumberland County Historical Society. Second. Thank you. At this, at this time, with all in favor, I now accept the motion for Outwitz to be part of the Cumberland County Historical Society. Thank you and welcome. The next item on the agenda is just the recognition of the 2022 officer slate for Cumberland County Historical Society. Um, Pat Ferris, if you'll stand please, is the vice president. Tom Coolidge is the secretary. Jim Litz is our treasurer. Jim? There has been no change at the executive level, so a motion is not required at this time. That ends the business portion of our meeting, and the next portion is the awards presentation. And what we've been doing throughout um, the, this meeting and as people were arriving was listing the, the information, the names and the information of the folks that are going to be recognized in our preservation um, awards presentation. Uh, so I will turn it over to Sean, and he's going to be doing the discussion and taking part in the next taking the next piece of the presentation. Thank you. Okay, so we have we have some awards that we typically give out every year. What I'd like to do is um, is acknowledge those awards and the recipients, and then once we're done with the awards program, we'll get to the main event. Right. First of all, um, I'd like to acknowledge um, the winner of our POPs program, which is one of our scholarships. Um, let's see if she made it back. She did, okay. Um, Mo Geiger uh, was a Dickinson College student who incorporated art and history with cheap husbandry um, at the college farm. She's very active as a volunteer um, and uh, helps various organizations throughout the com community, including volunteering with our Mount Tabor Preservation Project, which Carmen is, is a big part of. So Mo, if you wouldn't mind coming on up. Um, we don't have the physical awards, supply chain issues. <laughs> um, but we figured, come on up, we'll do like a photo op. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Mo. Next honoree, um, the Milton E. Flower Historian of the Year Award. The Milton E. Flower Historian of the Year Award was created in 1958 to honor the significant contributions of Milton E. Flower, Dickinson College professor and a major supporter of the work of the society. Since that time, the award has been presented to local historians who have made significant contributions to telling this county's story in a variety of different ways, but always documented with the highest levels of scholarly research. This year, we recognize Joseph Kress, who is recognized across the county. I'm going to finish saying great things about you. Oh. <laughs> I have no problem with that. Okay. <laughs> this year, we recognize Joseph Kress, who is recognized across the county for his contributions to enhancing the history of our county. In particular, in particular, the award recognizes his recent series on World War II. A native of central Pennsylvania, Joseph Kress earned his journalism degree from Shippensburg University, an award-winning journalist and full-time reporter for 31 years. 32 now. 32. <laughs> Kress wrote, wrote a four-part series entitled World War II Memories, telling eyewitness accounts of World War II. Inspired by his father and grandfather, Joseph Kress interviewed local veterans, used diaries and other original sources to make sure that these stories are remembered. Mr. Kress chronicled the war on all fronts. His passion for the topic shines through in this series. This series makes sure that these incredible stories will not be forgotten.
Hi, everyone. Hi. Hello. The irony of it all is I didn't set out to be a historian. <laughs> At Chippensburg University, I took the bare minimum history courses needed to graduate. <laughs> historian was a role I gradually grew into out of my love for journalism. It was here in Carlisle, in Cumberland County, among all of you, that my passion for history really took root and thrived. And what fertile ground you have, such rich soil of diverse and dynamic stories. I said it before, and I will say it again. History was never meant to be drab and dusty, but alive and active in its ever-changing impact. I thank all of you for helping me to see that, live that, and to be that. Learning about your stories has made me a better writer, a better historian, a better person. I have but one favor to ask. Could we all just pause and have a period of silence in remembrance of the passing of our World War II veterans? Their numbers are dwindling fast, as is their memories. The whole point of my series was to bring their stories to the forefront. Now let us honor them. Thank you. Our next award, the Roger K. and Helen E. Todd Distinguished Service Award. The Roger K. and Helen E. Todd Distinguished Service Award was created in 1986 in honor of the Todd's generous service to the Cumberland County Historical Society. This year's award recipient is Mike Getter. Mike has volunteered. Mike, if you want to come on up. I'm going to embarrass you like I did Joe. You can stand right here while I say nice things about you. Mike has volunteered in the photo archives since June 2010 and works from one to three mornings a week. He scans and edits photos for our collection and makes prints and CDs for our clients. He can resurrect beautiful images from faded and damaged prints and broken glass negatives. The high quality of photo work that the society produces is often the product of his skills. He has created a huge digital library of edited and restored images that will remain as a testimony to his amazing digital talents. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Our next award is the Special Volunteer Recognition. This year, the Board of Trustees presents a special recognition award to Linda Wells and Steve Do Dops? Doppies. <laughs> I'm sorry, Steve. <laughs> For their work. Steve Doppies and Linda Wells have been invaluable to CCHS for countless years. Each of them has multiple talents. Woodworking, bartending, bartending. <laughs> <laughs> Organizing, event planning, and willingness to help however they can. <laughs> During the planning process for the McLean Festival, they provided insight and information on past McLean festivals and how we could make this one even more special. Linda came ready with a binder full of information, which included where we put tables to what <laughs> beverages should be served at the bar. They are always willing to lend a hand where needed and are instrumental in the success of events CCHS holds each year. Looking forward to your help um, for the gala as well. Absolutely. There you are. Absolutely. Did you want to stand up? Or did you want to come up? Come on. Thanks. Y'all noticed the bar theme, right? <laughs> Um, the 2021 Executive Director's Leadership in History Award. Um, the Executive Director's Leadership in History Award is presented occasionally when the Executive Director feels the need 
to recognize the efforts of a particular group or individual for their contributions to the mission of the society. This year, our, our executive director, me, has chosen to recognize Randy Watts for his work to research and write about so many aspects of Cumberland and County history. He has published more than three dozen books and willingly shares his knowledge with others. Um, Randy also is working with us on the new um, train exhibit and, uh, and um, does many very popular walking tours for us. Um, he could not join us today. Um, it was kind of funny. When I told him that he, that he got this award, he said, I swear to God I've gotten this award before. I said, I don't know if that's true. He says, well, just another award. <laughs> So, uh, so, yeah, I guess this will just go in uh, Randy's closet of awards. <laughs> but we really do appreciate Randy. Um, if you've not gone on one of Randy's walking tours, I, I very much suggest it. And, <laughs> saving, the best. saving the best for last. <laughs> and finally, the William Foshag Preservation Award. William Foshag Preservation Award was created several years ago in memory of William Foshag, the owner of Heishman's Mill, in recognition of, its, of his dedicated efforts over many years to preserve the mill for future generations. This year, most appropriately, the award is presented to Randy Heishman. <laughs> Randy and his family are the current owners of the mill. Randy's efforts have taken the work begun by Will Foshag to the next level. The mill today looks much as it did when Randy's great-grandfather last operated the mill in the 1950s. He is also credited with the restoration of the weekly tavern in Penn Township. Both of these preservation efforts exhibit the highest quality of restoration techniques. Randy, would you like to come up? You know, in our lifetime, um, with everybody sitting here, we've watched a number of historic buildings uh, disappear before our eyes. Um, some of them that come to uh, recognition right now, the Bell Tavern is one. Uh, the mall out there took us away from a, a beautiful uh, mansion at one point in time. There's been seven done in the last 30 years that have gone away. Um, not colonial, but one would be the Watts farm outside. I believe it's up to us as the, uh, the holders of the future to preserve these for our children and uh, to keep the names of the past forefront. Thank you very much. Okay. With that concludes our annual meeting portion of our meeting and now we're going to